Hello everyone and welcome back to our daily current affairs videos. How is your preparation going on? Just tell me down in the comments below. In case you have or any doubt or face any doubts during your preparation, you can reach out to our mentors. You all know that you have you ha have personalized guidance available at your hands. All right. And those of you who are new to this channel, you should uh, know about our uh, 60 day RBI grade B crash course. All right. So in this crash course, you will get all the important uh, uh, study material and personalized guidance that are required for your RBI grade B preparation. All right. And also don't forget to subscribe to our telegram channel for daily updates, uh, quick access to our daily current affair videos as well as the PDFs and to solve daily quizzes and tests. All right. So the link for this app and the RBI grade B crash course is given down in the description below. You can also go to the website and check it out. There's also a lot of free study material to uh, equip you with your preparation. All right. So let's just get started with today's session of our daily MCQs. All right. So first question we have is which company has designed Hindustan 228, a 19 seater aircraft along with Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Okay, so HAL, you all know, is a public sector aerospace uh, industry. Mein HAL aata hai, all right? It is owned by the government of India and its board of directors are appointed by the president in, through the Ministry of Defense. All right, so HAL basically designs light compact aircrafts, light compact aircrafts for the Ministry of Civil Aviation or the Indian Air Force. All right. And this 19 seater aircraft that we are the question is asking you about. It is actually a civilian aircraft. All right. It is quite uh, OK. We will talk more about it in the explanation slide. First, uh, you answer the question correctly. Which company has designed Hindustan 228 and 19 seater aircraft? All right. So if you have been following your current affairs uh, regularly all right you should know uh, which what is the correct answer why because this is not a new uh, item it is it was already launched in the year 2018 all right so the correct answer here is dornier gmbh which is a german company all right and hindustan 228 is actually based out of the already existing dornier 228 all right so Dornier 28 uh, is actually the foundation or the basis for the civilian aircraft of, for Hindustan 228. And the moment that I mentioned civilian, you should know that this is not for the defense purpose, but it is under Oran, RCS Oran scheme, right? Regional Connectivity Scheme, Oran, which was launched in 2016, right? And Oran Phase 2 has been launched in uh, again 2022 in light of Azadi ka Amrit Mahotsav and that aims to increase the number of uh, airports with regional connectivity to th uh, 392. Alright, so it is a 19 seater aircraft flown under RCA Sudan scheme. Hindustan 228, it aims to fulfill India's aspirations for small civil transport aircraft. All right. So when you uh, start, uh, when you know, uh, learn about small civil transport aircraft, what do you understand? That it will serve as a mini ambulance. All right. It will airlift passengers in uh, stuck in an emergency or a national disaster or anything else. Right. It will also enable VIP transport. It will also he be helpful in cargo transport and it will also also serve as an air ambulance and a variety of other uses it can also be used for recreational purposes all right so yes sari is key significance hai, and it is it can also fly in semi prepared and unpaved airstrips now its implication kya hai ki semi prepared and unpaved airstrips pe land kar sakta hai what does it imply that it will be very very helpful in the situations of emergencies right in the situation for example currently this russia russian ukraine crisis to bring back passengers stuck in another war conflict countries or save people stuck in disaster situations all right. So for that purpose also, this is very, very useful. RCA Sudan, you know, uh, you know about the scheme. I have also discussed at length about it in my previous videos. So you can go and check them out. 
all right this is this was the scheme launched by ministry of civil aviation all right and the aim basic aim of the scheme is to make air travel affordable to people but at the same time it should be economically viable and uh, profitable to air service provider companies all right moving on to the next question we have which of the following ngos has collaborated with her and now for wincubate training program ओके सो विन क्यूबेट ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के लिए कौन से एनजीओ ने हर एंड नाव के साथ कोलैबोरेट किया है विन क्यूबेट से मतलब आप क्या समझते हो विन क्यूबेट कम्स फ्रॉम द वर्ड इनक्यूबेट राइट एंड टू इनक्यूबेट मींस टू नर्शर टू नरिश राइट दिस इज द मीनिंग सो ऑब्वियसली हर एंड नाव विन क्यूबेट वट डज द नेम सजेस्ट इट सजेस्ट दैट इट इज फॉर स्किल डेवलपमेंट राइट इट इज फॉर women entrepreneurs to train them to uh, nurture them with skills and a lot of information and technology transfer to help them grow okay so which of the following ngo has collaborated with her and now please answer this quickly you have option gauri india sayodhya home for women in need majlis manch dhriti the courage within and prerna iska sahi answer hai option d which is dhriti the courage within All right so this her and now project is an actually an indo german development cooperation right it is titled as economic empowerment of women entrepreneurs and startups by women okay so basically niti aayog ka jo ek target hai ek mission hai atal innovation mission atal innovation mission is basically aimed at promoting innovation culture innovation culture in our country right at the seed level right right at the seed level means it reaches out to schools it reaches out to schools and try to tap the innovative potential of the students right it tries to encourage innovation among students and promote innovation culture in our country okay so it is titled as economic empowerment of women entrepreneurs and startups by women right and her and now project it was commissioned by the federal ministry of economic cooperation and development and india's ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship okay so basically abhi uh, iska status kya hai right indo german development cooperation uh, her and now project is actually presently applicable in 12 states of which eight of them are from the northeast region right eight states are from northeast region and other four states are rajasthan you have telangana you have up and the fourth state i leave it all you uh, on to you guys to find it out and write it down in the comments below theek hai to 12 states mein ye scheme applicable hai mainly and majorly focused on women entrepreneurs another important aspect of the scheme is that women who went out of business due to the covid 19 outbreak it will help them bring back to business okay so moving on to the next slide we have aim and her and now will conduct this program right gender focused approach is ki rahegi we have already talked at length about it okay so let's move on to the next question odf plus villages how many odf plus villages villages are there in india as on march 28th 2022 answer this question quickly and correctly it was recently in news very very easy to answer okay so the correct answer here is 50000 odf plus villages have been there in india ओके ओ टी एफ प्लस विलेजेस ना ओ डी एफ क्या है ओ डी एफ एक मिशन है टू मेक इंडिया ओपन डिफिकेशन फ्री ओके एंड ओ डी एफ इज लॉन्च बोथ इन स्वच्छ भारत मिशन अर्बन एज वेल एज स्वच्छ भारत मिशन ग्रामीण ओके स्वच्छ भारत मिशन अर्बन इज अंडर इट कम्स अंडर द एम्बिट ऑफ मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ हाउसिंग एंड अर्बन अफेयर्स ओके and swachh bharat mission gramin it comes under the ambit of ministry of rural development okay so this is a very very important uh, no sorry uh, not the ministry of rural development but the ministry of jal shakti please correct it uh, swachh bharat mission uh, gramin comes under the ministry of jal shakti all right so odf plus villages is me telangana was the top performing state followed by tamil nadu and madhya pradesh 
All right, and ODF plus uh, actually holds a lot of scope for the rural economy. Basically, what will it do? It will provide uh, villagers with employment opportunities when it comes to construction of villages. All right. it will uh, offer employment opportunities with the constructor of sewage and solid and liquid waste management power plants right and it will help the rural economy deal with solid and liquid waste creating healthier villages right they will help reduce the amount of grey water and overall health of the village okay and same scheme on similar lines is being developed under swachh bharat mission urban for which we will talk about it at length in our upcoming classes you should know one more very important thing is that swachh bharat mission gramin has been extended from 2020 to 21 up till 20 24 to 25 and a loan amount of rupees 1.4 lakh crore has been sanctioned under it right after sanctioning 1.4 lakh crore under it the mission actually aims to make all the villages of india odf right open defecation free by the year 2024 i hope it was very very clear odf plus villages it comes under three categories aspiring villages rising villages and model villages right basically iska aim ye rehta hai to make every village uh, to encourage every other village uh, like you know when it comes in an awarding uh, basis it creates a competitive healthy competitive environment right every village would want to be the best in certain standards and outcomes right so this is a very very innovative technique to encourage all the villages to take steps and measures to make them odf or open defecation free okay which country has india set up technical council on investment trade promotion and facilitation all right so please answer this question correctly uh, this uh, has been circling around the news for a few days very important expo has been taking place and india has also is also attending it all right answer the correct uh, option uae uk usa germany and saudi arabia okay so the correct answer we have here is uae uh india has set up technical council on, on trade investment promotion and facilitation with uae jiske head uh, jiska capital you all know the capital of uae is abu dhabi right a few factors and a few points that you should know that india and uae actually are have a very very strategic partnership you all know that look east policy india ki hai but india is also tilting towards look west policy right look west policy why because it is strategically very very important right you can look at this map uae uh, persian gulf it is an important sea route uh, where india can import a lot of energy energy security ke liye uae india ke liye bahut bahut important ho jata hai all right and uae also needs india why because it wants to reduce its dependency on exports of oil and it wants to diversify its economy right you can guess that in 2017 the crown prince of abu dhabi was a chief guest in the republic day event all right so that is the importance uh, that india has with the west asian countries and especially with uae because it is also the fifth largest trade partner of india all right and a lot of indian immigrants are there in uh, west asian countries right ua being one of them right and capital you all know abu dhabi so this uh, trade technical council on investment trade promotion and facilitation is ke basic features kya hai it actually wants to reduce the burden on electronic payments right it wants to encourage trade encourage the hassle free free trade so that india and ua can reach a 100 billion dollar mark in 5 years all right so this is the main issue main uh, things of this question even though it does not uh, it will not ask you in the examination it is very very important to know uae ki bordering countries kon kon si hain persian gulf a trade route a very important a trade route in terms of energy security and gulf of oman all right and this 
रूट ऑल्सो रेड सी एंड गल्फ ऑफ एटीन इज ऑल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वाई बिकॉज यहाँ पे आ जाता है आपका सुइस कनाल विच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इंडिया करेंटली टू ट्रेड विद यूरोपियन कंट्रीज यहाँ पे यूरोपियन का एक्सेस सुइस कनाल वन ऑफ द बिजिएस्ट कनाल एंड ट्रेड रूट्स इन द वर्ल्ड और राइट सो डोंट गेट कन्फ्यूज बिटवीन द टू लुक एट दिस मैप वेरी वेरी केयरफुली लर्न अबाउट द कंट्रीज इन वेस्ट एशिया एंड देर कैपिटल नॉट मच इन डीप बट एटलीस्ट ऑन द सर्फेस लेवल यू शुड नो जस्ट इन केस इट इट आस्क इन द एग्जामिनेशन और राइट सो विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग प्रोजेक्ट एम्स आर क्रिएटिंग अ स्ट्रॉन्ग इंडियन वर्क फोर्स ऑफ टेन थाउजेंड पीपल इन यू ए और राइट अगेन इट इज रिलेटेड टू द ऑन गोइंग दुबई एक्सपो राइट दुबई एक्सपो ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू All right. So, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting has launched a scheme named Tejas. That is training for uh, Emirates for jobs and skills. All right. So, Tejas scheme aims to create a strong Indian workforce of ten thousand people in UAE in its initial phase. All right. So, it will basically uh, it will basically diversify job opportunities for the existing Indian immigrants and the potential Indian immigrants in future, and it will also enable cultural exchange between the people of India and UAE. All right, and another very important thing is it will also institutionalize the system of Indian workforce. Right, it will also closely monitor the working conditions and basic health and infrastructure that is being made available to the Indian workforce settled in West Asia. Right, so it is very important to institutionalize the Indian workforce and the Indian emigrant emigrants that are already present in West Asia through such schemes. All right. Moving on to the next question, we have Meghalaya Infra Development and Finance Corporation, right? So these Infra Development and Finance Corporation basically are long-term infra projects. All right, collaboration is very very important because infrastructure projects have a very very long gestation period. It is very difficult sometimes to repay the infrastructural loans. और राइट सो मेघालय ने कौन से बैंक के साथ कोलैबोरेट किया है फॉर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर डेवलपमेंट दिस इज व क्वेश्चन इज आस्किंग एंड ऑल्सो इट्स की थ्रस्ट विल बी योर डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एम एस एम ई इको सिस्टम सो आंसर दिस क्विकली यू हैव एच डी एफ सी बैंक स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एक्सिस बैंक अवंती फाइनेंस एंड सिडबी और राइट सो द करेक्ट आंसर हियर इज सिडबी स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रियल डेवलपमेंट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया headquartered in the city of lucknow uttar pradesh right it comes under your ministry of finance and as the name suggests small business industrial development ye jab aapne msme ecosystem padha tha to aapko khud hi it should have been a major hint to understand that the bank could have been sidbi all right so it comes under the ministry of finance okay so this will basically focus to develop msme ecosystem in the country in the state of meghalaya all right it will help build msme infrastructure and technology it will equip people it will help people uh, you know grow better be uh, help in help incubating their startups and entrepreneurs right so i hope this was clear which is known as the diamond city of india okay so diamond city of india surat surat is the diamond city of india okay you all know those if you follow the business section regularly you should know by now that diamond city of india is known as surat all the diamond that is imported from the world it it is mainly processed in surat all right the laser cutting and then there is actually a re export or uh, of diamonds um, and the major hub is surat all right so basically the manufacturers import raw diamond they process it they refine it and they make it into proper laser cut diamond and the jewelry and then they export it all right so this is how it works so steel roads steel roads have first been made in the city of surat right steel waste so basically steel sludge steel sludge is a very uh, major industrial waste from uh, steel industry all right and the disposal is often harmful to the environment right why because steel sludge is often disposed in the 
land disposal wastes right so uh, sustainable for sustainable development disposal of industrial waste is very very important so steel sludge have been for the first time used to make a road a road out of steel sludge or steel waste in the hazira industrial area in the city of surat it is actually a 1 km road with a 6 lane a six lane on both the sides right and the developer is arcelor mittal nippon steel india limited okay so steel sludge is also used in many other industries uh, steel sludge as a waste product is used in many other uh, industries also also important you should also find out about the plastic roads of our country all right like steel sludge there is also uh, an issue of plastic waste management in our country right and there have already been a lot of plastic roads been conduct uh, constructed by different states so just find it out and uh, write it down in the comments below which states have plastic roads okay which institute has signed an mou with the ministry of rural development to promote entrepreneurship among rural youth through swep program that is startup village entrepreneurship program it comes under deen dayal upadhyay yojana's national rural and livelihood mission that aims at generating sustainable livelihood for people in the rural area right especially in non agricultural sector and ultimately reduce rural poverty all right so which institute has signed an mou with mord to promote entrepreneurship all right so as the name suggests it is very easy to guess uh, this from the options that uh, you have been given below all right it is indian institute of entrepreneurship situated in guwahati that has signed an mou with mord <coughs> all right so basically startup village entrepreneurship program ka main aim kya hai to promote entrepreneurship in villages in non agricultural sectors right main issue, main thing is non agri sectors village level rural areas these are the three keywords that you have to remember whenever you face a question in the exam or an mcq in the exam you should know the ultimate goals of all the major initiatives and schemes okay of course it is also done in the collaboration with the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship right institute of uh, entrepreneurship was basically initially set up in the year 1993 with various stakeholders and uh, later with the constitution of the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship this institute has been transferred to this particular ministry okay <laughs> so it will act as a national resource organization to provide support for successful implementation of swep scheme all right it was established in the year 1993 as an autonomous organization under ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship not initially it was not under the ministry it was transferred to the ministry of skill development and entrepreneurship okay you should know about it second last question for today we have which of the following companies has launched india's first defense fund all right so you all know that our country is uh, moving towards atmanirbhar bharat and also there are initiatives like make in india and make in india defense right with all these initiatives it is very very crucial for india to also secure its sources of funding for defense sector in order to actually uh, realize the objective of atmanirbhar bharat in this sector all right so which of the following companies has launched the first in india's first defense fund right answer this question correctly you have five options hdfc mutual fund aditya birla sun life asset management uti asset management pgim india mid cap opportunities fund and invesco india infra fund All right so the correct answer here is HDFC mutual fund has opened India's first defense fund all right it is also known as HDFC defense fund the md and ceo of HDFC mutual fund is mr navneet muno okay and it is announced to establish india's first defense fund okay iska open ended equity scheme rahega right and uh, the countries will be investing in defense and allied sector companies 
okay so the allied sector will be what aerospace explosive ship building industries right uh, that are present on the society of india defense manufacturers okay it will allow investors to invest in defense and allied sectors on the basis of market capitalization and bottom up approach so what do you understand by this market capitalization and bottom up, up approach that the equity will be uh, valued at such that you know uh, many people can subscribe to the equity and you know enable uh, uh, some more sustainable sources of fund for defense okay so you should read about that it can also invest up to 20% of the assets in the companies other than defense and allied sector to achieve diversification here diversification basically means portfolio diversification right why because uh, depending on only one source of uh, one single source of investment can also be counterproductive you know to encourage a diversified sources of investment and equity purchases and uh, this uh, defense fund Uh, here we can invest up to twenty. The value has been reduced to uh, investment up to twenty percent of the assets. All right, and it will also be introduced in Nifty India Defence Index. Okay, and it, the fund will be managed by Mr. Abhishek Poddar. Who is the new Director General of International Labour Organization? This is one of the oldest organizations in the U. Uh, in the united nations it is a specialized united nations uh, agency all right and a new director general has been recently been appointed please answer it correctly from the options below you have gilbert f hung bo elizabeth warren bernie sanders cory booker and tammy baldwin you can easily eliminate the options if you are following the current affairs regularly okay so the correct answer here is gilbert f Humbo, who is the first African, he is the first African to be appointed as the Director General of ILO. Okay, he was former or uh, the Prime Minister of Togo, which is a small country in West Africa near Burkina Faso. Okay, so he was the first former Prime Minister of Togo, eleventh Director General of the ILO, and the first African to hold this post. Okay, so you all know about International Labour Organization. Its headquarters it's in Geneva, Switzerland, right? And it it is a major provider of international labour laws to most of the countries in the world. India is a signatory to this organization, and it also have also applied uh, many ILO conventions, right? ILO uh, convention there are many conventions like ILO convention on child labor right on migrant worker even on human trafficking so it is a very very important organization thank you so much for watching today's videos in case you have any doubts write it down in the comments below all right and they shall be quickly resolved keep practicing your tests study well for your RBI grade B exams all the very best take care and bye bye